one way to quickly find the different parts of a large file scattered across a disk is to use an index. So a file is broken up into several records and each record has some primary key value associated with it. The index can tell a system where to look on the disk for a record with a given key, which speeds up access. An efficient way to represent such an index is with a B tree. B trees are one type of self-balancing tree that is commonly used in file systems and in databases. Here is an example tree. A B tree maintains its keys in a sorted order. So this entire block here is a single node of this tree, and this node contains one, two, three, four keys. Now each of these little narrow slots are pointers to child nodes. So for these one, two, three, four keys, there are one, two, three, four, five children. And you'll notice that different nodes can be of different sizes. So this node has two keys, this node has four keys, two, four, and three. Now, I said that the tree was sorted, and that's because any child node, or rather all keys in child nodes between two keys, will be between those keys in value. And this child node on the far left will all be less than that key, and the values in this child node are all greater than that key. So we can walk through this tree and see that we have key values 1, then 3, then 5, and then we go down to this child, 6, 7, 8, 11, then back up, and then to the center we have 13, then back down, 15, 20, then back up, then 22, down, 25, 27, 30, 31, up, 40, and then down, 41, 50, 51. So this tree is sorted. Now this tree can actually be more than two levels deep and we'll see an example of how that occurs in a moment. But one more thing that needs to be discussed is D, which is a parameter associated with B trees. And this is the minimum degree. So in this case we have a D of 3 and this is once again the min degree of the tree. This minimum degree of three means that every single node has at least three pointers. So this node here is as small as it can possibly be because it has one, two, three pointers. That also means that every node has at least two keys. Now you can change this parameter to get different tree sizes. Another aspect of this parameter is that every node has at most 2d minus 1 keys which means there are at most 2d child pointers. So this node has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 child pointers. It actually has room for one more. The one exception to the min degree rule is the root node the root node can have a degree smaller than this. It does not in this example, but it will as we work on this tree, and you'll see why we need to allow this exception for the root node. But every other node has to obey these rules. Now the nice thing about the B tree is that all of the leaves appear at the same level. So we're going to add some values to this tree and we're going to modify it as necessary, but we'll see that even as we modify values, all of the leaves will be at the same level. Specifically, we're going to add the sequence of values, or keys, 26, 28, 2, 10, and 9. Now some of these additions will not cause dramatic changes, but some of them will. For example, the first insertion of 26 can go into this node. And remember we said that with a min degree of 
three, we could have at most six child links and therefore at most five key values. Well, there are currently only four key values here. So all we have to do is insert the 26 between the 25 and the 27 and we'll be done. So rather than redraw the whole tree, I'm just going to use a red pen to denote modifications like so. So this child node now has 26 in it. It has been added to this node. The, all of these leaves are now at the same level because this is replacing this structure here. Now when we add 28, something more interesting happens. We can't simply add 28 here between the 27 and the 30 because that would lead to six keys being in this node and that violates our D restraint that says that we can have at most 2D minus one keys or 2D child links. And so the way we get around this problem is the following. We look at this node and we identify its median value, which will always be the one in the center, in this case, 27. So 27 is the median middle value of this node. So what we will do is promote this 27 up to the next layer, giving us the following result. So at this point, we've just inserted 28. And I've marked the nodes that have changed in red. Now you'll see that what happened between this step and this step is that the 27 moved up to the node above to be in between the 22 and the 40. That created an extra child link so that we could split this large node into two separate ones. On one side we have the 25 and the 26 and the other side initially had the 30 and the 31 but remember we're inserting the 28 and so the 28 went with the right node because it was greater than 27 this median value that was promoted. If it had been less it would have gone on the other side. So we've added an extra child node but all of our leaves are still at the same level, thus making the tree balanced. Because the tree remains balanced, it will always take logarithmic time to search it and insert new values. And the sequence of operations required to modify it when a given node becomes too big is also fairly straightforward and quick. So the next two operations will be simple additions but you'll see how the last one is going to cause quite a large change to the tree. So first, we insert this 2, which simply goes between this 1 and 3, thus resulting in a fairly small change here. The next insertion is a 10, which will simply go between this 8 and 11, which is also a fairly simple change because that only takes us from 4 keys up to 5, which is still within limits. Now, this next insertion with a 9 it's going to cause a massive update, so I'm going to redraw the entire tree. What we're actually going to see is how the depth of the tree can increase, but all of the leaves will still be at the same depth. So here we have the final B tree. So what happened between here and here? Well, remember that the value we inserted was 9. So looking at this previous tree, we had a node with 6, 7, 8, 10, and 11. So adding 9 to this would have resulted in too many keys for a node given that the min degree is 3. And hence the max is 2D minus 1 keys. So that means that the median of this node, the 8, had to be promoted. So the 8 was promoted, giving us a 6-7 split and then a 10-11 split, and then the 9 gets inserted before the 10, hence after the 8. However, when the 8 was promoted up to this level, which was the root at the time, it put too many keys in this level. So we had 5 and then an 8 and then 13, 22, 27, 40, but that would have been too many keys. So what do we do? Well, we take the median of this node before the 8 is inserted, which is 22, and then we promote the 22. So that's why the 22 is the new root here, and it is above these other levels. So the 22 was taken out, 
thus splitting this node into 27 and 40 on one side and 5 and 13 on the other, the 8, which was the value that was being promoted, gets inserted at the appropriate place. And all of these leaf nodes here remain unchanged. So only the nodes in red actually get modified. The final result is a tree that is still balanced. So we have 1 through 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 15, 20, then 22, then 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31, 40, 41, 50, 51. So all these values are still in order, and the tree is still balanced because all of these leaf nodes are at the same level. The only thing unusual about this B tree is that the root node does not have a min degree of 3. Now I did say earlier that the root node is the only node that doesn't have to obey that restriction. And it is for precisely this reason. Because every once in a while the node that is the current root will become full and the way we resolve that is we promote its median thus splitting what was the root node into two new nodes of half the size that we need and after the insertion we'll have one node that is exactly the min degree in size because this node has three pointers three child nodes hence the degree of three and this one has four child nodes because we just inserted an eight which was promoted from below so this B tree structure is very useful in file systems and in databases because it provides an index to the actual file contents. You have a tree like this in memory, and then once you find the key you're looking for, there'll be additional information in the node that tells you where on the disk to access the record with that key. And so instead of scanning through a whole file looking for some data, you simply look it up by its key and then look up the particular location on the disk associated with that key so that you have overall far fewer disk accesses.